Hi, I'm Evelyn Hicks, Director of Clinical Education for Pulse Medical, distributors of Endoform and Hydrofera Bloom. Today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Dr. Gregory Bond, international wound care expert based out of Central Michigan University School of Medicine. Dr. Bond, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Evelyn. Today I'd just like for you to talk to us about wound bed prep and how you're managing that in your clinic. Yeah, wound bed prep is, is something that's evolved uh, recently with, a, with uh, a deeper understanding. We used to think of wound bed prep as just debridement and treating infection. We now know that we have to treat biofilm, uh, but even beyond that, we now know too that we have to treat the proteases in the wound. So we've been incorporating endoform into our wound bed prep uh, uh, protocol uh, to uh, treat that. Excellent. Now, endoform, both antimicrobial and natural, have an intact extracellular matrix. Just step us through how you're using endoform in wound bed prep. Well, yeah, the, the uh, endoform helps to modulate proteases in the wound. Uh, a few years ago, we learned about biofilms, but now, uh, really what we're also understanding is that in these chronic wounds, they have a very high protease level. So we have to think about treating the proteases as part of that wound bed preparation. And that's where endoform comes into play. We've been using endoform to treat th those high protease levels. So when you're bringing your patient in initially, uh, take us through step by step for how you're using endoform at each visit. Well, initially, um, when we first got the product, we would just put one layer of endoform on and patients would come back for their weekly visit and we'd see that there was endoform around the perimeter of the wound, but in the base of the wound, the endoform would be gone. So we knew that that endoform had been consumed or used during the course of care. So we wanted to make sure that we had enough endoform on there to treat them for the entire week because we didn't know when, that, when it was consumed. So we would then start with two layers or three layers and the point being is that we had enough layered endoform on the wound to dose the wound for that level of proteases. So what you were doing is putting it on, they come back within a week, because again, that's the standard that we see for wound care practice. And if it was gone, you you just add more? If they, for instance, if they had one layer of endoform and they came back and it was gone, the for the next week, we'd put two layers on. And if they came back and those were gone, then we'd put three layers on. And, and that's so that you'd make sure that you have enough endoform there to modulate the proteases for that duration. So when you take the secondary dressing off and look, if the endoform's still there, you know that there was at least collagen there, the, the endoform extracellular matrix was there to treat the wound for that week duration. When they come back at one of their visits and you see the residual endoform, what is that telling you? Well, if, if the endoform is, is participating in the wound healing, you'll actually see it working with the granulation tissue. It didn't just uh, disappear. So at that point, you know that there's active wound healing going on in developing that granulation tissue. And you'll actually see the endoform incorporating itself, becoming a provisional extracellular matrix in that wound granulation tissue. What happens in your regimen when now you see remnants of endoform? What does that mean to you and your other clinicians? It's a great question because at that point, you, you know now that you've modulated the proteases to a point where now the extracellular matrix in endoform can start to participate in accelerating the wound healing. So at that point, the endoform may actually be stuck to the, to the wound or incorporated into the granulation tissue. So in that case, I leave it right there. You, you can clean the wound, leave the endoform that's participating in wound healing there, and then apply more to make it accessible for ongoing wound healing. So you'll actually add additional endoform into the wound if need be? On top of that, yeah. That was excellent information that you shared with us about the successes in your clinic. Thank you so much, Dr. Bond. This is Evelyn Hicks, Director of Clinical Education with the Pulse Medical. Thank you for joining us.